while you're coming in here, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So today, in today's Guitar Monday Motivation, we're going to be talking about string control. I was actually having a chat this weekend, and uh, we got to talking about string control and how when you play, trying to control all those strings so they don't make noise on you. And uh, there were some things that I had discussed with this person that I don't know that I've really talked about before. It's all different for everybody depending on your hand size and things like that, but I thought it'd be a great thing for us to do. So uh, let's see here. Mike is here. Jeffrey is here. Hey, everybody. Uh, well, actually, we're going to be talking a little bit about muting uh, in, in terms of string control, too. So good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Mark. All right. Awesome. Mike is here. Thank you, Mike, for putting your name in there. Thank you so much. All right, cool. So anyway, what we're going to be doing today is talking about that. So uh, Tally is here. Poo Ninja's back. Greg is here. Jim is here. Cool. Okay, awesome. James is here. Jason. Good morning, Jason. Repsy Gaming. RJ. John is here. Rock and Rob. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This is awesome. Okay, so uh, again, just to recap, I, uh, this weekend I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about guitar playing, and we were talking about string control. This person was, um, let me turn off my thing there. This person was learning this thing. It's a good, there we go. Okay, can you all hear me and see me okay? Is everything going good? Just want to make sure you can hear me okay and see me okay. Okay, perfect. Late afternoon for you. Awesome. Cool. Hey, Steve. Hey, Brian. London. Let's see here. Cool. Okay, everybody can hear me good. Awesome. That's great. All right, so let's let's just keep going. So I was teaching this little riff from a song you might have heard before. Okay, and we got to talking about string control, and it got me thinking maybe that would be something really nice to talk to you about today is string control and understanding how to optimize that. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's just start off by talking about a chord, okay? Let's say, for instance, you were playing something like um, a C chord. We're going to start very easy, and then we'll just work our way up. And I've got distortion on for a reason, okay, because the, with a lot of distortion on, I'm going to get even more noise, obviously. So it's going to, uh, to take a little bit more to control. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to play this open C chord, and I've got a lot of distortion on, which I don't know that I would do, but we're going to use that as our example. Okay, so the first thing I have to understand is when I make that C chord, generally what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit the bottom five strings, and we're trying to avoid the sixth string. Hey, Steve Whaley, Wally, um, how you doing? Lawrence is here, Lawrence Baker from Ireland. Okay, so what I can do is use the tip of my ring finger to touch the sixth string and kill it. Okay. Get that back in tune there, or back in, I don't know why sometimes this Logitech goes out of frame, but I'll work on that too. So many things to work on, okay? So I can touch the tip of that with my, my third finger. I can touch that sixth string, and I can deaden it out, okay? So that's something you can learn to do at any time. Let's say, for instance, you were playing a G chord. I'm playing a four-finger G, um, but instead of playing this four-finger G, I wanted to take this first finger off and do more of like an ACDC style G chord. What I could do is lightly touch that fifth string with the bottom part of my middle finger, and it's gonna deaden it out. So when I strum, you're gonna get more of that ACDC kind of thing happening there. Hey, Steve, Ramiro, uh, Samden is here, Matthew is here. Let's see here. What a setup. It's almost like you do this for a living. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Can you not use your thumb? Absolutely. You can use whatever you want. That's the point, Robert. Robert says, uh, Robert O'Connor says, can you not use your thumb? You can do whatever it is you want to do. For instance, if I was making a D chord, I might kill that six string with my thumb, right? And do something like that. So string control starts with learning how to deaden out the strings that you don't want as opposed to leaving them simply exposed so they can vibrate and they can make noise. Now, we're going to do the best we can to come up with lots of different things for you to, um, in a very short amount of time here, to work on with your, with your playing. But when it comes to open chords, you know, you know just as well as I do that when you're strumming like a D chord, you're trying to hit the bottom four strings, right? You're trying to hit the four strings down here. But that doesn't mean that 
you're not going to hit more strings sometimes or less strings sometimes. It happens. We're, that's the realism of playing, right? So when you're strumming, again, I got a lot of distortion on, but when you're strumming this, you know, I'm directing my pick toward the bottom half of the guitar. Like I always tell people when you're playing, don't sit and like go. Because it's not going to sound like music. The most important thing is that you hit those strings with authority, right? You make it sound like a chord by strumming all the way through it. And when I'm playing like a D chord, I'm trying to play the bottom half of the guitar to contain or, or to, to advance that string control so I'm not hitting those top strings. You know, I'm not doing this. I'm trying to just hit down here. See? Truth Guitar Method is here. James is here. Mohammed is here. Hey, everybody. So, so that's another thing you can do is try and direct your pick. I always tell people, like, think of your guitar as having, like, maybe three different sectors. You've got a top sector, a middle sector, and a bottom sector. And you kind of decide which ones of those that you want to hit, right? So on a D chord, I'm trying to hit kind of the bottom half, which would be sort of two sectors, right? Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Let's see here. Give me one second. Chip. Perfect. Okay. Uh, unwanted string noise. This is my biggest problem right now, moving from acoustic to electric. Yeah, and, and th this is something that you want to make sure that you practice on a regular basis, for sure. So just starting off here, and w we've got a little bit of time here. I don't want to take way too much of your time. but So when you think about open chords, Think about two things. Number one, deadening out the strings that you know you don't want if it's possible. And number two, strumming in sectors, strumming in different sections of your guitar to avoid any unwanted noise as best you can. So instead of, you know, like with a D chord, think about your pick. You can still do your normal strumming things, but just kind of direct your, your, your actual hitting of the strings toward the bottom half of the guitar to avoid that. And then as a safety net, what you can do, for instance, with the D chord, is you could deaden out the sixth string or even the fifth string if you wanted to by bringing your thumb over the top. Now, of course, that's going to bring your wrist up, which is a little bit different than we often learn. But if you can, it's a great way of doing that. If, you're, if you've got strings above you, like the C chord, and I want to deaden out that sixth string, I touch with the tip of my index, or my tip of my ring finger, excuse me, that sixth string, and it'll deaden it out. That way, if I accidentally hit it, it's not going to make any noise. If you have a, a string within a chord, like the G that we talked about, then what you want to do, for instance, if I wanted to make this G chord and I don't want that fifth string, I can take this finger off and I can lightly touch that fifth string with my middle finger and I won't get noise from that string when I play. <laughs> See, so, and again, I'm using a lot of distortion if you're just joining me on purpose because it, it requires me to control those strings more, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? So let's keep going. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into power chords, okay? So with a power chord, for instance, maybe with a power chord or even a bar chord, which we'll get to in a second as well, if I was playing a six-string power chord, whether I'm playing a two-finger power chord or a three-finger power chord, however you play your power chords, okay? however you like to do it, okay? But there's strings underneath that I don't want. There's strings at the bottom here that I don't want sound. So what I do is, again, like that G chord, I'm going to take that index finger and I'm going to touch, not push, not avoid, but touch those, those thinner strings so when I strum this power chord, I can hit up here, but I can also... See, I can control those thinner strings so they're not going to make noise on me. All right? Now, this would go with, I saw somebody mention like a Prince chord. This would go with any kind of chord that you want. So if we think about, again, what I've done with this power chord is now we've got these thin strings down here I don't want. So what I'm doing is I'm lightly touching, okay? So I can control those. I'm lightly touching with my index finger to control those thinner strings. That way I don't have to be careful when I'm strumming you know, I still want to hit, like, the top sector, if you will. Okay? But I don't have to worry so much if I hit anything more than that 
because I'm going to control it anyway. So you want to make sure that you know you're getting that sound when you're when you're controlling these strings. Now, if I was to play a fifth string power chord, and this will go with like the Prince Funk chord uh, that Show Me Dat Beast uh, put in here. Okay, any of these kind of chords would work just fine. Hey, Peter. Hey, Ian. Hey, Thomas. Monish on Monish, circle of fifth. Everybody's here. This is so awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this power chord. I'm going to move down to the fifth string. So now I'm using a combination of different things I've talked about. Right here, I'm deadening out those thinner strings that I don't want down here with my first finger. And I'm also deadening the sixth string with the tip of my index finger. Now it's still going to make some sound, but it's not, it's not going to make that sound, right? So now with this fifth string power chord, again, maybe I'm really trying to hit just the fifth and fourth strings or whatever it might be. But if I was to hit more, and you can see I'm literally strumming all the strings. I don't have to worry as much, and what happens when I don't have to worry as much is I can really concentrate on my rhythm. I can concentrate on the groove or the dynamic. I'm not concentrating on which strings I'm going to hit. Now, in saying that, again, I want to reiterate, that doesn't mean that you don't necessarily want to just hit certain strings. You do, okay? It depends on the song. It depends on the groove. It depends on the intensity. But the nice thing about doing this is that if you would hit more strings, or maybe you do want to hit more strings to get more of that aggression, that percussive aggression that's happening when doing that, you're in control. You're not getting noise from all of those other things. Uh, legit Empire Gaming says, stiff, thick pick today. You got it. Always. Unless I'm playing acoustic guitar, I'm always using a really thick pick. And with this kind of thing, I like a really thick guitar pick to be able to cut through there. Okay, we'll get to palm muting. That's really not what we're, we're here to talk about, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, because it is part of string control, but we're going to talk about it in a string control manner. So just, just hold your horses, okay? So if that makes sense, that's how you can control all of these strings when you're playing chords. So even if you were playing a funky chord, and again, I got the wrong tone for this, but you get the idea. Okay, so like right there, I'm playing five, four, three, and two. I'm deadening out the first string, and I'm deadening out the sixth string. Right? Or, right? Somebody asked about a Prince thing. Right? Now this one, I'm playing the bottom four strings. My hand isn't big enough to, to, to touch that sixth string and deaden it. If it was... I would most certainly do that. But because it's not, I just have to be careful in this case, okay? So again, at the very beginning, I told you this. Everybody's different. Their hand sizes are different and things like that, and that's where you might have to readjust these somewhat. I know lots of players that use their thumb literally over the top for just about everything. I cannot do that because it, it doesn't, my hand is too small. So I can't do that for everything like some people can, okay? So if that kind of makes sense, those are things to think about. You can always come back and watch this again if you need to, okay? So now let's move on to single notes, soloing, you know, playing melodies, things like that. When you play, I'm going to turn on a little delay and reverb here just to kind of show you. Okay, when you play... <laughs> Whatever it is you're doing, the goal here is that you're using all those same tools, but you're using them with uh, a, a lot more, um, I don't want to say effectively, but you're using a lot more of it at the same time. So let me show you something that you can work on. So let's say you just took a simple scale. Maybe it's the, uh, the Band-Aid. Yeah, I was hanging something yesterday, and I decided to put the drill through the side of my thumb. So... Uh, that's why I got that today. Maybe you're just playing a major scale, or maybe you're playing a pentatonic scale, or whatever it might be. I'm going to show you with a pentatonic again, because just to make this super easy. So with a pentatonic, we know we've got two notes on each string, right? So when I go to play the sixth string, I'm already deadening out all five strings underneath with my first finger, okay? 
So as I move down the guitar, of course my first finger needs to keep moving down and there's less strings for it con to control. So as I move, as soon as I get to that fifth string, now the tip of my index finger is going to control that sixth string. So my first finger right now is touching everybody, literally everybody, but it's pushing on the fifth string. So you can see if I strum, and this gets into like funk style strumming, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan, that kind of stuff, is that same kind of thing where what I'm doing is I'm pressing on the fifth string and I'm deadening out everything else with my first finger. So the only thing you're hearing is that that fifth string. Now if I was really loud on stage or something like that, this is very important because everything isn't feeding back, right? The strings aren't vibrating. So when I'm on the sixth string, I'm controlling everything with the bottom of my index finger. When I get to the fifth string, I'm now controlling the sixth string with the tip of my index finger. Now right there, when I get to the fourth string, I can still control the fifth string with my index finger, but I can no longer control the sixth string. So one of two things has to happen. Either your thumb is going to have to come around and start controlling, but here's the deal. It's only going to be able to control so much because as you keep moving down, your thumb can't you know, keep coming over the top like this. So if that makes sense, um, what I do, and this is where the palm muting comes in, okay, is as I start moving down, I start using not my palm muting section. You know, when I do that, I'm using this part of my hand. I always call it the karate chop part of your hand. Right? I find that spot right back here. In order to get the palm mute sound that I'm looking for, right? That's how I would do a normal palm mute. Now what I'm doing is I'm not really palm muting. I'm trying to deaden the strings. So if I do a, a, a typical palm mute, I'm going to be touching more th more strings that I would probably want to use, right? If I'm, they're all going to wind up getting muted. So what I do is I turn over and start using this part of my hand right here, kind of where my the pad of my thumb. Now again. I don't know what it's like to have different hand sizes. I just have my hand. So you're, you might have to readjust this, but watch this. So as I play, when I get to the fourth string, I'm literally sitting right over here. I'm not in my palm mute rock position. I'm sitting like this over here, and I'm deadening out that sixth string. And as I play, I keep moving that part of my thumb down to control those strings as I go. You see? Let me kind of get caught up a little bit here. Well, I think I saw my mom in there somewhere. I don't know where you were. If you're out there, mom, hello again. Uh, hello, let's see here. John is here. Steven is here. Matthew. Scott is here. Hey, buddy. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, Okay. Yeah, this the video will be available later on as well. You'll be able to watch this on YouTube or Facebook or wherever it is you are, okay? So as I move down, that comes in. Okay? And starts controlling all of that. Because again, what I'm really looking for when I'm playing, especially with distortion, without distortion, I, I think it really doesn't make any difference, but you certainly notice it with a lot of distortion. I'm trying to keep all the notes separate, right? I'm trying to keep them independent unless I don't, you know, I want like, you know, more notes at once or something. That's a completely different story. But as I'm playing, I want to try and keep everything connected but not overlapping each other, right? <laughs> That's why you always want to control those. So if I'm moving this direction when I'm soloing or when I'm playing whatever it is I'm doing, single note stuff, okay, my first finger is always trying to control things. Now, it doesn't always have to be my first finger. It might be, you know, a third finger that's deadening things out. Right? But you'll notice whenever I play, if I get done in, with a phrase and I'm, I'm maybe doing a vibrato or something... See, I'm controlling everything. Everything's being controlled. Or if I go to my third finger down here. Uh, 
See, I'm, my first finger comes up. I don't just do this, right? And I start controlling everything around it as I play. Now, it takes a while to learn how to do this, okay? If you've never done this before, you have to figure out what's the best way of doing this for yourself, too. But the, the analogy I've always told people with this is when you're playing, let's say on, you're on stage and you're doing a solo or something like that, the, the audience is watching your fingers and they're you know watching your facial expressions or whatever it might be. That's all the stuff that's showcasing, right? But really, and I call that the stuff that you write, you know, if you had a, a piece of paper, that's the, the, the fancy stuff, so the stuff you're writing on the lines, right? But the control is happening between those lines. That's where the control is happening. And it's the control that makes everything sound good. The notes might be good, right? But if you don't have that control, that string control, the problem is you're going to get a lot of, you know, all of this stuff's going to start happening. You know, you don't want any of that kind of stuff. So you really want to make sure. You start trying to do that. Now, Todd says, how about using a wrap? Well, a wrap around the nut would be fine if you didn't need any open strings, right? I mean, uh, he's talking about what, like a fret wrap, I'm assuming. And a fret wrap, wrap works really great, but it's not a substitute for this, right? A fret wrap is really, really great when you're trying to do something like maybe in the studio or you're trying to record something and you're trying to make sure that there's no noise in that section that you're recording. But if you're on stage, you know, you don't want to have to keep moving it every time you play a chord or you want an open string, you know, you're doing and you're doing something that has open string and then, you know, you got to pull it back up. So it's a different purpose, although it's serving the same purpose, right? But what we're learning to do is we're learning to control those strings with our hands, and you very much can. You can very much learn how to do that. But again, that doesn't mean that a fret wrap doesn't des uh, serve its purpose. I use those fret wraps a lot when I'm recording. If I'm writing a, a solo in something like that, you know, I I'll always put it on just because it, it, it saves me from the noise for recording. But if I was going to perform that live, that would be a completely different kind of thing, okay? How to remove noise between switching chords? Well, it depends. If you're if you're trying to do it, if it's if it's a sequential thing, you know, you're trying to get used to being able to keep that that pressure down and time your strum. If you're having to move, then what I do is I touch, right? So I'm always touching here in between. If they're really fast, then it's just, it's a timing thing. Right, anything like that. You know, that's a timing thing. But when you're trying to play, you know, you might stop them in between. If they're open chords, oftentimes you want those strings to ring out. You know, so you get that kind of sound. And sometimes when I'm switching, I might throw some of these scratches in between. You see what I mean? So it's all about control. And when I'm doing this, I'm going back to what I talked about earlier. I'm deadening out what I don't want, and I'm just bashing the guitar because I want this aggressive sound, right? And right there, look what happens. My thumb with my little Band-Aid comes over the top on that A power chord, right? So I'm deadening out that sixth string. There's my G, deadening out the fifth string. Deadening out the sixth string. It just It's always there, okay? So you want to make sure that you... um. You control all those things. So that's what I wanted to talk about with you today. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you're playing something that's really heavy, you know, a lot of distortion, that sort of thing, another thing to be aware of, two other things for string noise. Number one is what you'll notice is any time I'm not playing, my volume is off. Any time I'm not playing, my volume is off. Even in songs... <laughs> If there's a break, my volume gets shut off. Like I'm never, you know, like this. Now again, I've got a noise gate on, so you're not gonna hear it much, but 
there's never a time I learned how to do this in college. Um, I learned the hard way that you want to shut off your volume anytime you're not playing. And so any that like it's it's literally you'll see me do that all the time. Right. And you can love string noise, but string noise like this is not wanted string noise. Right. Nobody on the planet's going to think that that sounds good. So there's there's string noise, you know, bashy kind of string noise. But there's you, you have to learn to control things. Otherwise, you're just going to wind up with a lot of noise. And again, you know, my my volume will always be off whenever I I'm not playing. Okay. The other thing is is that you can use again. I just mentioned this. Uh, what's called a noise gate, which I think I have one on there. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear that, but. I've got my camper on right now. And right there, I've got my noise gate off. Now, if I turn my volume down, okay, there is a story behind that, Robert. See? But if I turn the noise gate on, it's going to pull some of that out. So if I'm doing something really heavy or I've got a really heavy preset, oftentimes I'll have that noise gate pushed up, but it depends. If it's a heavy uh, channel that I use for a whole song and I need to back down the volume, I have to be very careful with that noise gate because if I set it too high and I lower down my volume, it's going to want to, you know, pull away that that signal. Where I have the volume or the noise gate on this particular thing set very, very low, because again, when I'm playing, I, I never leave this on. This is never on. Okay, so. <laughs> You know, want to learn to control all that. If I go for a, again, I'm touching everything here. You see, now for bending, this will be the last thing I'm gonna let you go because I don't want to take all your time here. But when you're bending, bending's a little bit harder. Because you see, you get in the way of another string, don't you? So again, I'm controlling all these strings up here, but there's there's a spot where the string is going to come up. I want to be just above that so I don't kill that bend. But see, when I come back down, if I don't touch that, I'm bending the second string, so if I don't touch that third string, it's going to make noise. Right? So you'll see my first finger will come up and it'll start touching. And like right there, this is touching that fourth string. You see, so if I do a bend on the third string, I'm killing the fourth string with this part of my, again, this part of my hand. So I'm always trying to control those things. So if that makes sense, okay? Work on those things. See if they help you. Do me a favor. Check out GuitarZoom.com. I've got a bunch of different stuff available there. Um, sh like and share the video. Subscribe if you can. All that stuff helps me out enormously. So take care. Stay positive. Have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you very soon. I've got um, another remote collaboration coming out sometime this week, too, so be watching for that with some friends of mine from, uh, from the U.K. So take care, and I'll talk to you all soon, okay? Bye, everybody.